Whew. Hey kids, have you ever had anyone tell you, don't do or sell drugs? Well guess what, don't sell onion futures either, because the pigs will find your ass. Why are you asking me? Well, it's simple really. January 17th, 1915. A young boy is born from a Jewish Russian man in the US and A. Born and raised in Pine Island, New York, Vincent Kosuga owned a 2,000 hectares black dirt farm where he grew onions, celery, and lettuce. Always driving stock cars and always carrying a 38 caliber pistol with him, he was definitely the interesting type. He later started trading in both Chicago and New York, but started leaning more toward Chicago as he had a very successful business with the mercantile exchange there. Survived a plane crash near Oswego, and known for being responsible for some sneaky acts like bribing the weather station to tell everyone heavy frost is coming in order to win a gamble he made. In all his endeavors, he met a man called Sam Siegel, owner of a local produce company and a fellow onion trader. They took a liking to each other. November 1955 this is a story about Sam Siegel and Vincent Kosuga embarking on a journey that would change the onion trading world forever. Vincent had made up a scheme that would enable them to corner the entire onion market. Together, they bought enough onion futures and onions that they occupied 98% of all the onions in Chicago. A futures contract is a contract where you basically gamble whether the price of that asset in the market will go up or down. And if you're right, and if you gambled a lot of money on it, you can win serious cash. Anyways, it wasn't enough. They needed to ensure that they have all power. So what did they do? First, they bet that the price on onions will lower dramatically in March 1956. November through December 1955. They went to onion sellers and did this. I promise, officer, I won't be touching any little girls or boys anymore. Right then, this is the last time, old man. Oh, what? Oh, look, never mind. I want to have all your onions, man. Oh, why, heavens no. Oh, yeah? What happens if I release all my onions to the market, huh? If you join me, I'll give you a very small cut of the money I'll earn. Just slightly more than what you usually get. Your onions won't be worth anything anyways. You've got no say in the matter. My lord, even my dog is saying yes. Yes. God, God. You're supposed to say woof. Fuck off, Ryder. Can somebody get this dog to say woof? Well, I don't know, John. He's a pretty stubborn dog, if I do say so myself. Ah! I'm gonna go get a smoke, stupid dog. Yeah, are you in a hurry to meet your maker or something? Because I'll get you there real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. Now, why all this effort for these onions? Well, it's all in an effort to drive the Chicago Mercantile Exchange onion trading into a corner, do it all legally, getting away with it while also earning a lot of money. The CME was and still is to this day part of the largest financial derivatives exchange. This CME company is basically a company that makes a contract between two parties. For example, your company and the CME itself to make a trade in agricultural products, metals, stock indexes, and a bunch more stuff. Now, it just so happened to be that in 1955, the most traded product in the entire CME was, you guessed it, onion futures. And it also just so happened that Sam and Vincent had 98% of all onions in the market. Sam and Vincent had one and a half Olympic sized swimming pools full of just onions. Altogether, they would weigh in at about 14 million kilograms and 30 million pounds. Now, what did they do with all these onions? They secretly shipped them all outside of Chicago to clean them, make them like new, because they were starting to spoil to then only reship them back into Chicago publicly. All futures traders started to think that there was an excess amount of onions, and the price plummeted. Sam and Vincent bought themselves into a short position, 
which meant that they can now sell all of their onions for a very large profit, thanks to the amount of onion futures they had. This enabled them to start the chaos. March 1956. Sam and Vincent push the button. This is it. They release all their onions and flood the market. The prices of onions go down even further, causing one bag of 23 kilogram onions to sell for 10 cents. The price of the onions inside the bag are worth less than the bag itself. Onion farmers left and right were going bankrupt. Sam and Vincent became millionaires, and they had no issues with each other whatsoever. Not much was heard from them after everything had went down. All over America, there were cities where there were almost no onions left at all. See, in order to save the price of the onions in Chicago, other parts of America shipped them onions, which resulted in other parts of America to have great shortages in onions as well. To prevent anything like this from ever happening again, the government banned onion commodities trading. The Mercantile Exchange tried to file against the new law, saying it is restricting trading and that that shouldn't be allowed. But it got them nowhere. Thanks to this mastermind plan, to this day, you are not allowed to sell onion commodities in America. June the 3rd, 1960. Everyone is still in disarray about what had happened. Onion farmers all around the country try to get to Vincent and Sam, but it's too late. Evidence had faded. Sam and Kosuga, after a huge lawsuit where the United States Department of Agriculture was a deciding factor, were declared innocent. That badass stood there and said, if it's against the law to make money, then I'm guilty. He wasn't punished at all and was let go. He got to live a peaceful life with his wife, going back to New York, Pine Island, opening his own little place called the Jolly Onion Inn that became a true staple in Orange County. And that's it, a happy ending for our protagonist. Hey guys, Valerian here. It'd mean the world to me if you'd like this video. I work days upon days to get this video out. I have been Valerian, till next time.